dear brothers and sisters one greetings from shivalaji vidyapeet popularly referred to as sbv i am delighted to meet you all once again through channel 1 i thank you for your continuous support in this endeavor vision is undoubtedly the most dominant of our senses that plays a crucial role in each facet and every stage of our lives however decline in vision among the general population is commonly observed in a plethora of conditions the global need for fostering i care is projected to increase dramatically in the coming decades that is poised to offer a considerable challenge to healthcare system globally at least 2.2 billion people have a vision impairment or blindness of whom at least 1 billion are affected by a vision impairment that could have been prevented either or still remains to be effectively addressed having said that it must be emphasized that all eye conditions typically do not lead to vision impairment and yet can still culminate in personal and financial hardships because of associated treatment needs we need to understand that the burden of eye conditions and vision impairment is not born equally the burden tends to be greater in low and middle income countries and underserved populations such as women migrants indigenous peoples persons with certain kinds of disability and those who thrive in rural communities population growth and aging in association with behavioral and lifestyle changes and increasing urbanization will dramatically increase the number of people with eye conditions vision impairment and blindness in the coming decades global eye care needs are expected to increase pronouncedly in the coming decades due to demographic and lifestyle trends including aging populations globally with the number of people living with blindness projected to travel by the year 2050 this will cause a significant and long lasting impact on the development educational achievement quality of life social well being and economic independence of individuals as well as on society inflicting disproportionate burdens on the underserved and vulnerable populations would then loom large national program for control of blindness also known as npcb was launched in the year 1976 as a centrally sponsored scheme with the main objective of reducing the prevalence of blindness as for a survey in 2001 and 2002 the prevalence of blindness was estimated to be 1.1% a rapid survey on avoidable blindness conducted during 2006 to 7 showed significant reduction in the prevalence of blindness various activities initiatives 
undertaken during the five-year plans under NPCB are targeted essentially towards achieving the goal of reducing the prevalence of blindness to 0.3 percent by the year 2020. Despite concerted action during the past 30 years, significant challenges continue to hamper and these are mainly concerning the barriers to availability and accessibility of eye care services such as cataract surgery, refraction services and provision of spectacles. Other factors include the paucity of trained health personnel, insufficient cross-sectoral collaboration, extended areas of rural and remote areas, socio-economic and cultural considerations, inequities and costs of services. The World Health Organization defines blindness as best corrected visual acuity of 3 by 60 or worse in the better eye. In line with that, in India also, under the National Program for Control of Blindness, the vision less than 3 by 60 is classified as blindness. Applying the WHO criteria for definition of blindness, approximately 45 million people in the world are estimated to be blind. The major proportion of blinding eye diseases are accounted for by six diseases, out of which cataracts, cataract accounts for 43 percent, glaucoma 15 percent, diabetic retinopathy 8 percent, trachoma 11 percent, vitamin A deficiency 6 percent and onchocerciasis for 1 percent cases of blindness. Other important causes of blindness include age related macular degeneration, refractive errors and optic neuropathy. In India, numbers are slightly different. Blindness in cataract accounts for 62.6 percent of cases, refractive errors 19.7 percent, glaucoma 5.8 percent, posterior segment pathology 4.7 percent, corneal opacity 0.9 percent, surgical complications 1.2 percent, posterior capsular opacification 0.9 percent and other causes account for 4.9 percent cases of blindness. The National Program for Control of Blindness was established in the year 1976 and was renamed as the National Program for Control of Blindness and Visual Impairment. The Vision 2020 is a global initiative for elimination of avoidable blindness which is a joint program of the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Prevention of Blindness with international memberships of NGOs, professional associations, eye care institutions and corporations. Blindness control can be planned at various levels. Approach to planning and implementation of the blindness control measures should be based on the strategies which include primary prevention, which is prevention of the disease occurring in the first place even before the disease occurs. Secondary prevention, that is prevention once the vision loss due to the disease has occurred. And tertiary prevention is trying to restore the sight to a blind person. Disease oriented approach includes services for cataract, vitamin A supplementation, control of trachoma, screening of school children for refractive errors and distribution of ivermectin for onchocerciasis. The third approach would be service oriented approach which includes primary eye care services at community level, secondary services at eye clinic level which includes the services by the general medical doctors and non-ophthalmologists, tertiary eye care services at training centre level which includes the all ophthalmologists. The primary eye care consists of predominantly the promotive, preventive measures and some curative actions and it also focuses on education and community participation. Here the health workers are trained to recognize the common eye conditions and take appropriate actions. They are trained to identify the major symptoms of vision loss, pain and red eye and actions include administration of antibiotics and referral to next level. Secondary eye care is hospital based with dispensaries and it includes general practitioners, ophthalmologists and ophthalmic assistants. It consists of adequate infrastructure to handle common blinding conditions. 
tertiary eye care includes large institutes which have all diagnostic and therapeutic facilities. The management of less common blinding conditions is also done at this level. Apart from this, there are also state of the art mobile eye services which conduct eye camps in rural areas along with assistance of the non-governmental organizations. Health systems confront significant challenges in meeting the current and projected eye care needs of the world's population. The challenges which need to be addressed include global rise in eye care needs due to changes in demographics and lifestyle. Secondly, data are often lacking and health information systems weak, thus hampering planning. Thirdly, eye care is poorly integrated into health systems. For example, in national health strategic plans and health information systems, the eye care workforce is poorly coordinated. The World Report on Vision six to stimulate action in countries to address the eye care challenges by proposing integrated people-centered eye care as an approach to health system fortification. This builds the foundation for facilitating service delivery to address population needs. It refers to eye care services that are managed and delivered in order to assure a continuum of promotive, preventive, treatment and rehabilitative interventions against the wide spectrum of eye conditions and most importantly coordinated across the different levels and sites of care within and beyond the healthcare sector and according to their needs throughout the life course. Greetings from Shibalaji Vidyapit. The third national conference of health and intellectual property rights academy, namely HIPRA, was held on the 16th and 17th of December, year 2022. The theme, IEP, that is Intellectual Property and Youth Healthcare, Innovating for a Better Future. It's worth mentioning that Health and Intellectual Property Rights Academy is an academy formed by eminent persons and innovators drawn from interdisciplinary fields of healthcare in India to aid in the promotion and dissemination of knowledge related to intellectual property rights. This academy aims to encourage and advance the knowledge, study and practice of healthcare intellectual property rights of India. HIPRACON was inaugurated fittingly by Professor S.E. Parija, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sri Balaji Vidya Peet and also the Founder President of HIPRA. In his presidential oration, Professor Parija laid emphasis on the fact as to how the innovation ecosystem should be established in healthcare higher education institutes for promoting healthcare intellectual property rights. More than 100 innovators and inventors, faculties and student members hailing from various healthcare sectors participated in the impressive two-day conference with great zeal and zest. The conference hosted guest speakers and resource persons who had made significant contributions towards intellectual property. Yet another impressive event was the unveiling of portrait of Professor Aaron Antonovsky. A portrait of Aaron Antonovsky, globally acclaimed as the father of salutogenesis, was unveiled by the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sri Balaji Vidya Pet SPV, Professor S.C. Pariza, at the Institute of Salutogenesis and Complementary Medicine. Sri Balaji Vidya Pet, fondly referred to as SBV, celebrates the commemorative centenary year, that is, year 1923 to 2023, as a year of salutogenesis. Well, salutogenesis essentially refers to wellness. A special commemorative plaque was also unveiled by Professor Parija. Professor N. Anantha Krishnan, the respected Dean of Faculty, provided a succinct account of the establishment and future plans of the Institute of Salutogenesis and Complementary Medicine. Dr. Abhishai Antonovsky, the illustrious son 
of Professor Aaron Antonovsky, presently working as the Mental Fitness Branch Department of Health and Wellbeing Medical Corps, Israel Defense Forces Israel, complemented the stellar efforts of SBV in establishing an exclusive state of the Institute of Salutogenesis and Complementary Medicine. Thank you. A range of effective strategies are available to address the needs associated with eye conditions and vision impairment. These include health promotion, prevention, treatment and rehabilitation strategies, some of which are among the most feasible and cost effective of all a comprehensive five-pronged approach can help accelerate action besides meeting these challenges. These include making eye care an integral part of universal health coverage. This will contribute immensely to reaching sustainable development goal targets. For this to happen, quality eye care services needs to be provided according to the needs of the population and with minimal costs. Second is implementing integrated people-centered eye care in health systems. Third is promoting high quality implementations and health system research complementing existing evidence for effective eye care interventions. Fourth is monitoring trends and evaluation of progress towards implementing integrated people centered eye care. And fifth is raising awareness and empowering people and communities about eye care needs. In addition, it is important to admit that scientific and technological advances are deemed necessary for evolving new screening methods for the purpose of early detection, diagnosis and treatment for vision related problems. I wish you the best of health. Do remember to continue practicing physical distancing, wearing masks and personal hygiene. Stay safe. God bless you. Jai Hind.